Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's study hospitality webinar. My name is Svetelina or Lina, and with my colleague Anastasia, we'll be helping you in the chat while our three wonderful presenters from three distinguished hospitality schools will tell you more about hospitality. So, uh, how will the webinar go? First, we'll have a short introduction on the, on the subject, then we'll talk about the three universities, schools, and then we will answer live your questions. So who do we have here with us today? Um, as you can see, some uh, very friendly faces next to me. Uh, we have Louis Pitcher joining us from Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne in Switzerland. We have Samuel Waters from Hotel School de Hague in the Netherlands. And we have Yui Serra from um, Hospitality School St. Paul in Barcelona, Spain. I hope you're doing fine. Yes. Thank you so Thank much you. for yes, we know. us. Thanks for having us. Always very intimidating uh, presenting with hospitality specialists because you guys have um, all these presentation skills and soft skills that you're going to tell us now a little bit about. I know that you have a short introduction on why hospitality and why hospitality is much more than, than we think. Um, so, Luis, would you like to start on that? Well, I think um, one of the, the things that I hear a lot when I'm talking about, uh, well, two students about hospitality is, oh, no, but I don't want to work in a hotel. So I think perhaps my, my colleagues are nodding, so I'm guessing that happens to you too. Um, hospitality is really, it's, it's the way you treat people and it's the way that your soft skills are presented and so on. It's really very little to do just in hotels. Hotels, of course, you need to be able to welcome your guests. You need to be able to um, make people feel good in your business. But I would argue that you need that in any business, in any industry. I agree. I mean, when we when we talk about hospitality as well, you know, we within all of our programs, I think we have practical aspects within the program. Um, and often parents ask me, you know, I don't want to send my child over to to Thailand to work at the front office agent. You know, what's the true benefits of that? And I think what's always important to take note is that, you know, when we're sending our students all around the world to do these fantastic internships, um, we're not necessarily sending them there to learn the skills of a front office agent. Sure, yeah, that's going to be part of it, and they'll definitely learn something from it. But what you're really learning there is, you know, resilience. How do you deal with people from different cultures that will interact with you in very different ways? How do you have colleagues from different cultures, and how do you work alongside them? Um, do you develop um, skills and perseverance, for example? And, and you know, how do you manage your daily life living alone in a new country? So, the, you know, the... the Hospitality is more like a, um, a route towards learning bigger and better skills. It's really a mindset, as Louise correctly said, um, that at the end, when you have this hospitable mindset, not just hospitality companies want you, but banks, insurance, motive, uh, automotive, all different industries would like the customer at the forefront of your mind. And I think that's what's going to be seeing. You'll be seeing more and more in the future as well. Yes, I agree with what you say. Even though originally we started, you know, um, um, to prepare future uh, hotel managers, restaurant managers, and uh, now we can say it's more hospitality leaders. I mean, uh, all those soft skills that um, we prepare someone prepared for a lot of changes: adaptability, flexibility, uh, languages, um, multitask. Uh, we have to. Sometimes we are like an orchestra. You know, uh, we have to uh, find solutions. Uh, in real life, uh, no, no, in rushing and finding the right solution, always uh, with service-oriented companies. Originally, it was more related to hotels, but as you said, it can be banks, uh, experiences in our industries, uh, shopping malls, offices, etc. So, hospitality is a global, um, it's a global uh, industry, and every time there's more people with hospitality skills. Uh, required to work in other non-hotel traditional companies. I'm actually thinking of an example that we had recently, actually it was with you, Luis, we had a class of, uh, with one of your uh, lectures uh, and it was uh, the, the case study was when uh, Apple was opening uh, their first store, if I'm not mistaken, or their biggest store, um, how would they recruit their staff? So um, can, can you tell us a little bit about, about that, that case? I think that's a very good example of where hospitality can take you. 
I think one of one of the things that you when you when you think of a brand, you don't just think about the product or the service. You also think about all of the sort of every touch point that you've had with that brand. And Apple are, are very good at our, the architecture of this of this customer journey and and so on. And so they knew that in order to get people to spend this much money on a phone, it's not just about the phone, it's also about the service, it's about the experience, buying the phone, the experience in the shop, the experience of their products and, and apps and, and so on. So that's why they actually asked um, Ritz Carlton to design their customer journey for them in order to be able to greet their, their clients in a similar way that you would in a hotel, but when they walk into the Apple store. And you'll you'll see as well, you know, the way that they, they arrange the shops, it's not so much a counter, with the, the salesman behind it it's very much them coming towards you making you i guess take less of a step in their direction and more the other way around and, and really making it very easy for you to part with your cash um, and buy uh, these expensive phones and computers and so on and that's really i think you're right it definitely highlights the importance of the soft skills and and the the ability to um to convince you know that this is a soft skill as well you need to whatever you're selling you need to make your your clients believe that you know that they need it in order to to live and, and so on and that's why um i think that soft skills is, is something that's really important to hone and as sam said it's really important as well to put people in the opportunity to learn those skills which is why hospitality is such a great way to do this because it's an industry that's very easily accessed uh, by people that don't necessarily have a huge background in it. It's quite sort of a um, you know entry level. You don't need a huge background of experience behind you, so you can put yourself or you know straight away into positions that you can develop these soft skills um, because it's just not possible to learn those sorts of things in the classroom. Sam had yeah. his own example related to an iPhone, I remember from a previous webinar, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I actually was going to just about say that because not only has, you know, companies or, or industries learned from the hospitality industry, um, it's gone vice versa. And actually, a lot of industries have now implemented uh, revenue management, which the hotel industry stole from the airline industry uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, actually, even before that. But the hotels, you know, back in the day, you know, you would have a, a room basically for the whole year that was one price and during Christmas it would be a bit more. And uh, a good example that we always give within revenue management, which is now a globalized industry in, in every industry, um, is the fact that when you have an iPhone, right? If I have my iPhone today as an Apple, uh, as Apple as a company and I don't sell it today, it's not going to combust and explode in the night and I can never sell it again. Uh, it will be there the next day and I have a physical asset. What's different with the hotel and the hospitality industry is that you're learning the soft skills in order to be able to sell a service and experience. And once that experience expires, for example, a hotel room on the 3rd of March 2021, that opportunity to sell that experience, that product, will never come back again, right? Because time is is in the past then. Um, so we're, we're a unique industry where you're learning about sales skills and soft skills which will really hopefully maximize that revenue that you're gaining from a company um, by ensuring that all of your rooms are sold or all of your airline seats are sold. Um, so it's quite a unique way to, to sell something or have a proposition for something. Uh, and it's very different to many industries that have a hard product, a hard service um, to sell. What a great example. And hopefully all the hotels in um, seats will be full very soon. Yes. Um, yeah, you did go really um, quite, quite uh, deeply over the different, uh, the world of, uh, of opportunities. And uh, I noticed the three of you are actually uh, hospitality alumni. Um, so if I can have Luis just give us a few examples of very successful al alumni of, of, of your school. And uh, just to conclude, um, work in hospitality bring you after uh, graduation. I think the, the most exciting alumni story that I, I'm talking about a lot at the moment is a girl that graduated with me actually a few years ago and she now works for um, an, a Formula One company and travels the world when we can travel um, with the Formula One driver and organizes the um, on you know the, the trackside events um, with the Formula One driver and whoever else is invited. So I think that is pretty awesome we also have um a couple of alumni in the uk so they they um 
two brothers and, and their father who actually all came to EHL. They own a private uh, members club and they also own a, um, an events business. They do a lot of events and catering for Buckingham Palace, but also for various Olympic events and travel around the world setting up um, these uh, sort of on-site catering, um, very high class catering um, for that. Um, then, you know, there's also, for example, one of the um, things with, with hospitality is, is that, you know, when you've got these big chains that are able to pay huge amounts of money for revenue management tools, um, then that's great. But then you also have a lot of smaller family run businesses that just don't have that kind of cash. Um, to spend. So they really almost exclude themselves a little bit from the market just because they can't afford this, uh, these tech uh, solutions. So uh, one of the alumni that graduated uh, in 2013, he's actually in Barcelona and he started a company where he has uh, bespoke made websites and um, booking engines for smaller uh, family run hotels, making sure that they're able to um, to join and be relevant in the revenue management world. So there's all sorts of different things. I mean, Cartier, um, Rolex, banks, UBS, Credit Suisse, Swiss Airlines. I mean, there's there's all sorts of examples in many different industries. What we, what would be an example in uh, Barcelona from Mr. Luis? Today it's going to be Luis and Luis with us. <laughs> yes. No, well, uh, you know, I, I like about this that I have so many examples like with Luis, uh, they're similar, like Sam, Sam, you took my example when I, that I used with interviews about selling time rooms, you know, I love it, so we're on the right track. So, but let, don't forget about hotels and restaurants, we're talking about hospitality and it looks like, like many hotel schools are like, like mm, promoting more, other ho not, not hotelier, hospitality issues. Um, we have many examples, we've been on business for over 54 years and uh, we have from students that uh, they alumni that they create that they operate uh, their own Michelin star restaurant and uh, consultancy firms uh, now going more to hospitality students that they work with um, um, buildings of offices or shopping malls showing what hospitality is to non-traditional hospitality industries so we will all we will have many different examples of this beautiful industry uh, and now with the times that they're coming, uh, things will be changing and we'll be having even no, new opportunities, new jobs that they haven't been designed yet. So it's a great work here in hospitality. That's really reassuring because a lot of people think, oh my God, what do we do now with the hospitality degree? Uh, knowing how the tourism industry is, is struggling at the moment, but you gave some great examples. So I cannot wait to learn about your schools. Thank you so much for this introduction. Now, shall we um, hear from Luis on EHL and then we will um, travel to the Netherlands and then to Barcelona. Uh, we'll have about 10 minute presentation from each one of our presenters. In the meantime, you can ask questions in the chat. We'll get back to you at the end. Thank you so much for this great introduction. So I think, well, this slide is definitely relevant to my colleagues as well. Um, hospitality is a much bigger industry than I think a lot of people realise. And yes, COVID is happening at the moment. It's shut down a lot of more traditional hospitality um, businesses. But as we said before, hospitality and the skills that are associated with this um, sort of lifestyle are really so transversal and so um, looked for and so sort of, uh, what's the word, sort of, searched by all sorts of different industries you know banks from consulting firms to real estate firms you know they want people that know how to look after their clients 
So 413 million uh, jobs worldwide is um, is really not uh, a huge stretch of the imagination. And then on top of that, you need to think about sort of uh, jobs outside of um, hotels and restaurants and events companies that are still looking for the skill set um, that we provide our students with. So actually, there is just so many jobs, so many different industries, so many countries you can work in that ultimately the, the results, the opportunities open to our graduates are just endless. We have um, three campuses, uh, as you saw in the video. We have Lausanne, which was established in 1893. Um, Pasuk joined the team a few years ago and Singapore opened this year. Um, we're offering our EHL degree over the three um, campuses. We've got two different pathways. Uh, one is the academic pathway, which is four years um, with one year of work experience. And then we've got our professional pathway, which, as it would say on the tin, um, does have a little bit more of work experience um, involved in the, in the program. So it makes it a tiny bit longer, um, but also a bit more of a hands on experience as well. So here you can see our first class um, in 1893. So you've got a lot of men, uh, a lot of moustaches, everything's in black and white. Um, this was taken outside the um, Hotel d'Angleterre in Lausanne. Um, it was uh, founded by Jack Chumi, who was basically looking, um, this is during the sort of industrial revolution, and there were a lot of very aristocratic families and guests that were coming to some of the most amazing hotels around Switzerland. Um, and looking for very high class service as they were used to at home. And uh, Jack Chumi realized that actually his workforce perhaps needed a bit refining. So he, in between the different services uh, at the hotel, he opened his class um, and was teaching them how to, you know, do wine pairing, how to uh, prepare the table, how to pour wine, how to deliver food and so on. So to really bring up the level of um, service at his hotel. This was the foundation of the EHL. I'm pleased to say that we now have many more nationalities. We have a lot of women as well. Things are a little bit more colorful um, too. So EHL has really evolved over the years. We're now very much looking at many industries, as I've mentioned many times before, um, and really looking at multicultural um, education, hands-on practical learning, um, and of course, a very in um, international experience at EHL. So, as I mentioned, you know, with 1893, we have a very strong heritage. We're very known, um, particularly in the hotel world, but now more and more so in other industries as well. Very well known around the world. Um, one of the, we have, you know, so EHL represents lots of different business functions. So we've got the three campuses, but we also have an advisory uh, consulting branch as well. So we really have to, do have our fingers in a lot of pies in the hospitality world and in the services world. We offer multiple programs, so you know students can keep coming back. We offer certificate programs for people that have perhaps spent their lives in um, in hotels, so they can come back and, and get some qualifications. We have MBAs as well for students that have perhaps worked in other industries and have qualified in other industries and would like to convert to traditional hospitality. Of course, we also have our bachelor degree, which is offered over the three campuses and is our main uh, program at EHL. A really unique community. I think, you know, anyone that's been to um, more traditional universities, you know, where you have a very sort of a theoretical approach. I think, you know, what what's nice about EHL and, and my colleagues, it's probably the same in their schools as well, is really the group work that we have in the learning environment. And I think this really sort of sets you up for a, a good understanding of what the, the, the real life career is, is waiting um, and helps you sort of evolve as we said, the soft skills, but also your people skills and your professional skills. So I think that plus all the different committees, the community that we have on campus um, across the three campuses is really um, very unique to, um, to our university. We touched briefly on the alumni network. So we have 25,000 alumni around the world. We have the, um, they're based in 150 different countries. They regularly meet, um, depends uh, where they are, of course. But, you know, for example, in London, we had uh, regular pub nights um, once a month. They also organize a Christmas party. They organize um, an event at Henley Royal Regatta. They do many events at various restaurants and so on in, in Italy, all over the world, in Hong Kong, Shanghai, New York. You know, you name it, and if you're there uh, for an internship or even um, to start your career or during your career, you know, there's always going to be a friendly face that you can find in your city, which is quite comforting, particularly if you've sort of picking up and, and leaving to, to move to the other side of the world. Um, in terms of the student life, you saw a little bit in the video. So we've got loads of sports and, and activities that are available to our students. 
These committees are actually student led and student run. So students, um, they raise the money, they first have to make the business plan, raise the money, and then um, operate their association or their committee. So you'll have the head of HR, head of finance, head of marketing for all these different associations. They're constantly um, holding events so that they can raise a bit more money to offer more events or towards um, the, the, the sustainability of, of their uh, committee. So not only is this giving students the opportunity to do something in their free time, but it also gives them additional experience in finance or marketing um, to add to their CVs. As I said before, we have 120 nationalities on campus. So a lot of those will be um, based in Europe, um, the, the Americas and APAC as well. But you know, we are seeing an, an increasing number of applications coming from the Middle East and Africa as well. So you know, hopefully that number is going to go up. But it's really lovely to see how people can work together from such different upbringings, such different places in the world, and really you know, unite over a common cause, which is lovely. Um, the three campuses, as I said, in Lausanne, in Pasug, and Singapore. Uh, Singapore opened this year, so our first students will um, be starting there in September. I mentioned before the two different pathways. So we have the academic pathway. This is really great for students that uh, like to have the sort of the academic uh, pressure, um, a lot of sort of very dynamic uh, environment, um, and really sort of very much focused on more of the university style of learning. Um, we definitely focus a lot on the theory. I mean, in any case, our academic pathway, although we call it the academic pathway, is definitely not as academic as other universities. Um, you know, a lot of group work, a lot of presentations, a lot of internships. So you do get a chance to sort of implement um, your theories as well alongside your degree. So that's really um, something that I found particularly as a student myself, um, particularly attractive about the course. And this we offer it in Lausanne and Singapore. It's four years long and you have uh, two six month internships during the program. The professional pathway is really great for those that prefer a slightly smaller and more nurturing environment, and particularly those that want to go into traditional hospitality that may be completely fascinated by culinary arts or by, you know, particularly hotel and restaurant and events types of uh, services and companies. We really focus on, again, the practical learning, but even more so than in the academic uh, pathway. This is a course that's offered in the Pasuk campus. It's a little bit longer than the four-year program. Again, that depends on the amount of work experience that you have, um, but you are able to, um, to try lots of different uh, environments in terms of your internships, um, and you'll also get a Swiss professional degree as well as the Bachelor of Science in International Hospitality Management from EHL, so that you actually leave with two diplomas. EHL and is very into industry immersion. We mentioned this earlier with my colleagues. So, you know, it's very much learning through doing. You know, we have a great opportunity with this industry in traditional hospitality, hotels and restaurants that you don't, there aren't great barriers to entry um, in terms of entry level jobs. You can just go and do that for a week as a, as a, a young student. You can do that for a bit longer um, when, you know, when you're a university student and so on. And you can also enter the industry that way and work your way up through the ranks. So it's a really great way to sort of acid test, if you like, the uh, your passion for, for service and for serving other people. Um, and uh, this is very much what we base a lot of our courses on, but not just the practical parts of the degree, but also, of course, the finance, the marketing and so on. Innovation is something that we really focus on at EHL. There's a whole um, innovation village that we have as part of our campus. So students who would like to start their own companies can go there and use the resources and the connections. Um, and of course, the minds that we have on our campus to develop their projects. Um, students also have the opportunity in their second internship to work on their startup um, and also as part of their thesis project, their graduation project. So this is a really great opportunity for those that really know what they want to do and they've already sort of designed, if you like, their uh, future company.
So this is a CGI image of our new campus. So we are um, currently in the sort of, the, the not the digging phase, we're now refilling the hole. So that's a, a, a relief to most people. Um, but we have built a lot new, a lot, uh, excuse me, many more bedrooms, um, single and double occupancy bedrooms so that we can have more students living on campus, which is great. We also are just completing the swimming pool. We'll have the tennis courts back very soon. Um, and of course the, the sporting facilities, we have a beach volley court. Um, we have uh, some other pitches. We also have a gym as well. And of course our spa. This will be part of the curriculum um, as of uh, September and students will spend time in the spa uh, reception Obviously not with the treatments, but you know, looking at managing the spa side of uh, the hospitality management. So again, another contact with clients and so on. Singapore is, um, it's just open. So it's currently open um, the doors and we're offering some short courses, but the bachelor degree students will be joining their second year in Singapore as of September. And um, this is really exciting because we've long had an office in Singapore, um, definitely have a need and, um, and there's a good interest in students from students in that area of the world. Um, so they're very much uh, lining up to join this very dynamic campus in Asia. Um, so Singapore is often considered Switzerland um, of Asia. It's very tidy, it's very innovative, um, it's very uh, sort of hospitality and service led. Um, so it really made a lot of sense to have our, uh, an additional campus over there. Holistic education is very much the the you know the, the words of the day. It's also how we do our admissions process. So we're not just looking at your grades. We're also looking at what you do, who you are, why you do the things you do, and this is very much then carried on into the education. We're not just trying to give you more information so that you graduate after four years with more information in your brain. It's really about developing you as a person uh, and as a professional, and not just your brain. I, I think my colleagues will also um, probably have similar things to say to you about this. But, you know, again, through the committees, through the experiences in the different campuses, through the internships that you can do one in Asia and one in the US or one in Australia and one in London. Um, it's completely up to you. You really have so many opportunities to grow as a person, to grow professionally and also academically. So that really is taking care of the 360 degrees of the student. In terms of hospitality sectors, you know, we have so many things that you could be doing um, as you leave EHL. We've got students going into banking, into consulting, real estate, um, hotels, hotel chains, development of hotel chains. So really, you know, the world is your oyster. Um, in for this, I would just like to mention as well that we have two career fairs every year. So they come, uh, all, about 160 companies come on campus or virtually on campus um, every six months. And they come to recruit our students both for their second internship and their first, but also for graduate positions. And one of the benefits of being a graduate of VHL is that you'll always be welcome to come back um, and benefit from this career fair in the future. So if, you know, in 10 years time, you decide that you'd like a career change, then why not make the way your way back to Lausanne or Singapore and come and visit our career fairs and see if your next opportunity could be lying there waiting for you um, so you know if you want to ask any questions please do um, I will be monitoring a little bit the questions in the chat um, but otherwise I will hand over to my colleagues who will be talking to you about their schools thank you for listening How do I see my future? I want to make the world a better place. I want to learn from it, give back, and contribute to something bigger than me. By following my dreams, I will grow, experience, and improve. I want to be proud of who I am and be respected for my compassion, my skills, my knowledge, and my strengths. This way, I can motivate and inspire others. When I push myself to reach my own limits, I know I will grow beyond my wildest imagination.
I want to feel part of something, something bigger, part of a network of like-minded people, to share ideas and to learn from each other. I believe that you should be the change you want to see in the world. So how do I see my future? I know my future is bright. Well, good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Maybe even good morning. I saw some people in Peru. Uh, my name is uh, Samuel Spranius Waters, and I am one of the international recruiters here at Hotel School The Hague. Um, going to take the next uh, 15 or 13 minutes or so to talk to you all about our great institute located in two campuses in The Hague and Amsterdam. For those of you that want to send me an email after, this is my email at the bottom here, so feel free to get in contact with me, write it down now, I'll give it again at the end, and I'm more than happy to assist you with your questions. So let's talk a little bit about hotel school. Well, like Louise, we also have a very nice old picture up here of our first intake. It's a bit smaller. I think your presentation showed it better. Um, but again, back then, 1929 is a very different time. And we're actually the second oldest hospitality business school in the world. So just after uh, Louise and Lausanne, hotel school opened in 1929. Back then, you know, as Louise was saying, it was a different world. We only had men uh, joining us back then, I'm afraid. Um, and it was really started for the industry by the industry. So the gentlemen stood at the back there of this picture. Uh, they are the fathers and uh, mothers of the sons sitting in front of them there. And they saw uh, an opportunity within the Netherlands and within Northern Europe that, you know, there wasn't really a provider in uh, high quality education in hospitality. So uh, these hotel owners and entrepreneurs came together and they created Hotel School The Hague back in 1929 in order to supply their sons and daughters with the best possible education for their future. And eventually the idea was that they would take over the companies that the parents currently ran. A lot has changed since 1929. Uh, you know, we've grown to two campuses, both in Amsterdam and The Hague. Um, our original campus in The Hague is 54 years old, uh, and Amsterdam was opened in 2012. Um, and actually, the renovation is happening in The Hague, but I'll touch upon that in a second. We also have our Scotel, which is a unique aspect of uh, going to university in the Netherlands. Most Dutch universities do not offer on-campus uh, living during your time, but we do as a unique part of Hotel School The Hague. So you'll live in our student hotel, Scotel, for the first year of your education. But again, I'll touch a little bit more upon that later. So what's happening with the renovation? Well, we're going to have a brand new uh, campus in The Hague. It's going through a multi-million euro uh, expansion and renovation plan. You can see some impressions here, but it's going to be a very modern, light and bright campus with all of the 21st century technological advancements that you would expect to have. Uh, we're going to have a huge library with over 20,000 uh, books in uh, hospitality alone and others, of course. Um, large uh, meeting spaces, as well as several restaurants, cafes, and areas for you to enjoy. So uh, it's going to come up to par with the new campus in Amsterdam, um, and it's just going to be a campus fit for the future. It's actually due to open sooner than summer 2021. Who knew that builders could wor work on time, but it does happen. Um, we're actually ahead of schedule uh, and hoping to open the campus even sooner than initially expected for you guys to join us in September 2021. So let's talk a little bit about the um, reasons why Hotel School The Hague is a great place for you to study. Well, the main uh, course I'll be talking to you about today is the Bachelor of Arts in Hospitality Business Management. That's our main bachelor program. That's what I have, actually. I'm a graduate of Hotel School, graduated two years ago, um, and have been working for them ever since. Um, we're a world-renowned institute, as we all are represented here, but we're in top five worldwide for QS World Rankings, which we're really proud about, and we've been ranked number one in the Netherlands for the last eight consecutive years. Um, we're also providing a very high quality of education with a very low price, um, and we have the Dutch government to thank for that, but I'll touch more upon that a little bit later into the presentation. This is just to show you that, you know, we are a world leading program. Uh, we are recognized worldwide and have a reputation, not just in the hotel industry, but uh, um, in many other industries as well. 
um, and you're really putting your uh, education or your trust into a high quality education provider. Well, it's also interesting to note we are fully uh, accredited by the National Dutch Accreditation Board, and we do not utilize foreign accreditation boards. Um, so it's really the Dutch will inspect and ensure that the accreditation is to the standard of the European Union, um, and that's something we're quite proud about as well. So what are the main characteristics of studying in the Netherlands, uh, sorry, studying at Hotel School The Hague? Well, firstly, there's a strong emphasis on the business aspect. So at the end of the day, you are studying hospitality, but everything you learn, everything you study um, is actually in the context of business as a whole. So when we talk about revenue, when we talk about costs, yes, we will apply them within an example of a hospitality company, for example, like a hotel or like a real estate company within hospitality, like CBRE. But at the end of the day, those equations, those formulas, those business principles that you learn within our program are identical to those business principles you would learn in any other business program. Um, but we just combine it with that hospitable people soft skill aspect, which will increase your higher ability after graduation tenfold. We're also an international school with over 75 nationalities represented within the program uh, from people from all the way from Hawaii to Singapore, South Africa, and all the European Union nations are represented within Hotel School The Hague. We're also small scale. We have a huge amount of demand. You know, a lot of students contact us and really want to join our program. And around one in five, one in six of our applicants are accepted. So we are a competitive school to get into and we could expand if we wanted to. But we do not believe in a, a large scale learning environment. And we really want you to have classes of maximum 25 students in one class. And we really want you to have a um, in-depth a relationship really with your lecturer that will know you by name. They will know you as a person rather than a student number. And you will really get to utilize not just their uh, their friendship and, and, and mentorship throughout the four year program, but ultimately what we want there is for you to have a great network upon graduating. And if your lecturers are all coming from the industry like they do at hotel school, you can only be a, a lecturer at hotel school if you're also coming from the business world with some real life work experience. They bring that network with them. And if you know that lecturer by name and if they know you by name, they are going to help you out in the long term and use uh, you can use them as a great resource and vice versa in the long term. Um, so we really want to keep things small and keep things into a much more hospitable learning environment. So let's touch a bit, little bit further on that hospitality business school aspect. Uh, well, to keep things really simple, 80% of what we do is academic. So everything that you can imagine within an academic education, because we are a university, we do provide you with a bachelor degree, the same as any other university uh, in the world, we are providing you with a bachelor degree. And that means that there is a lot of academic uh, prerequisites that you must meet in order to get that bachelor degree. So 80% of what you do will be in the classroom, uh, undertaking entrepreneurial learning styles, uh, having uh, group work, having projects to work on, as well as individual examinations. So rather than the traditional way where you have to do a lot of self-study, at hotel school, yes, we have self-study, but we also have a lot of emphasis on group work, project work, and trying to initiate different ideas, initiatives with your colleagues and peers, which will ultimately be attested um, through a defense mechanism. So you will have a presentation, for example, in front of investors or in front of um, people that are interested in your company, they're the lecturers, they're people, external sources as well that will judge your project and they will give you feedback based upon the project that you've given. This is just like it is in the real world. So when you're producing a project for a company, you will have to pitch that project, show that project to your boss or supervisor or client. And that is something that we are already training you within the bachelor program at hotel school. So we're really trying to combine theory with real life experience so that you don't graduate uh, university with just knowing all the knowledge of within a book, but no idea how to talk about that knowledge, no idea how to sell that knowledge, no idea how to present yourself. That's what we're trying to make up within the business world by attending Hotel School The Hague. 20% of what you do is practical. That includes 10 weeks of working in our practical outlets in the first year, a six month internship in the second year, as well as 10 weeks as being a manager in the third year of our on-campus hotel, and finally, six months of being a management position in the Launching Your Career program at the very end of the four-year program. I'll touch upon that later as well. 
So this is a little bit how the program looks. Uh, you can see here all the different years. Uh, we also have two starting intakes. You can start in either August or February, depending if you want to take a six month break, for example, get some more experience, go on a gap half year. Um, that's why we are really flexible with when you can start at hotel school. That first year, as I said, you'll be living in Scotel, remember? That's where you will stay on campus in either Amsterdam or The Hague, two main cities. You have an urban campus experience of the Netherlands with a bustling student life outside of the campus. So it's not just hotel school and that's everything. Uh, you also have a lot to do outside of hotel school because you're in two of the main cities within Northern Europe. The second year you will go on your practical placement and then when you come back, you do not live on campus anymore. So you'll actually have two years of living either in Amsterdam or The Hague. We believe it's really important for you to have that on-campus experience, but it's also important for you to grow up and become an adult and therefore live in your own apartment, perhaps with some friends, because that's also a learning opportunity within itself. Finally, in the last year, you get a lot more opportunity to tailor make the program by picking masters, uh, sorry, minors and a pre-master program, which means you can join some of the top five business schools, MBA programs straight after hotel school within the Netherlands, such as University of Amsterdam, Nijrode, and Rotterdam School of Management. These schools contacted us and they wanted hotel school students and they've implemented the pre-master into the program. So it's just a great example there where you research, traditional research universities are putting a lot of trust and um, respect into the hotel school program. So what about that first internship? I'm going to buzz through this because I don't want to uh, take up all the time. Uh, but the first internship really has to be in a luxury five-star hotel somewhere in the world. You see here the Ritz-Carlton in uh, Hong Kong. You can see the Hilton in, the, in Bora Bora, the Hay Adams in Washington, D.C., where I went, uh, the Sofitel Krabi in Thailand, also where I went, two very different places. Um, but you can just see a great impression here of some of the companies we work with. We work with 800 industry partners for you to pick from, and you'll sit down with our placement office to create a tailor-made um, internship program that meets your wants and needs. For example, if you want to go to a resort or if you want to go to a city, have you always wanted to live in the States? Have you always wanted to visit South Africa? Pick the internship based on your wants and needs. The second internship in the last year is the Lycar internship, launching your career. And this does not have to be in a hotel. You can see some of the companies that we work with here, like JP Morgan, CBRE, Nike, PwC, Louis Vuitton. These are not hospitality companies, but it's a touching upon that aspect we were talking about earlier, where more companies are really wanting hospitable leaders that are not just understanding how a business works, but also understand how to talk to customers, how to greet clients, how to look after your employees as a manager. And that's why hotel schools, all of them, are becoming a very attractive um, route for these big companies to hire from. I don't have time to go through these courses, I'm afraid, because I only have 13 minutes. So I want to uh, ensure that everyone has enough time to talk about their institutes as well. Um, but you can see here a big diversity in courses, revenue management, strategy development, actually where you can go to Miami or London for six weeks, not as an internship, just as part of the curriculum here. Uh, it's called a business trip, we call it. These are the internships that I've spoken about. Um, these are some of the alumni fields that we are um, working in. You can see there, which is really interesting for me, one in three of our alumni are starting their own company. So that means one third of our students are actually entrepreneurs and starting their own company. And that's because we really have a strong emphasis on entrepreneurial learning with an innovation lab and more um, emphasis for people to actually know how to run a company upon graduating. You can see other jobs like sales management, business development, human resources, and operations being the top employer still. So becoming a general manager, hotel manager, front office, or food and beverage manager. We're working all around the world in many different continents. So you may be thinking, well, this sounds amazing. How on earth can I go to hotel school The Hague? Because this sounds exactly what I want to do. Um, is it going to be incredibly expensive? Well, the answer is no. Luckily, thanks to the Dutch government, they will actually subsidize most of your education. So yes, this does cost us a lot to provide this world leading education, but the Dutch government does not believe in, in high fees actually. So they will pay for the majority of your education, whether you're EU or non-EU. You can see here the, the yearly fees are quite 
uh, low in comparison to UK, US universities, for example. If you do need su financial support, you can also get that from the Dutch government and a great resource is duo.nl. Um, they believe that education should be for all from all economic backgrounds and social economic backgrounds. And that's why they will um, uh, really try their best to ensure that you can study within the degree of your choosing. Scholarships, for those of you that may be thinking about a scholarship, are not huge in the Netherlands. That's because the cost of studying is already far lower than most other universities in the other countries. Um, we do offer two scholarships, though, the Holland Scholarship for um, Vietnamese and South African nationals, as well as the Orange Tulip Scholarship, very Dutch, right, um, which is uh, for all, uh, but you need to have um, academic excellence in order for you to get that. If you are interested in that, again, you can email me directly and I can tell you more about the offers we have. Lastly, we do have a selection program, okay? So th since our school is very competitive to get into, we get a lot of applicants um, each year, we do have to have a selection program. That means that actually, due to the Dutch system again, we're not really interested in your grades. You just need to pass your high school, so 24 IB points, or the passing grade for your equivalent education system. But we look into you as a person rather than the grades in a piece of paper. That does not mean you can put your feet up and, hey, I don't need to do any more homework. No, the higher grades you get, the better. And then you can get scholarships, for example. Um, but we, we as a Dutch Institute have to take into consideration you as a person, as a whole, rather than just the grades on a piece of paper. So that's why we invite you to a selection day. We both do them online and on campus, uh, where you'll have a small interview and a pitch, a role play, an English and math test. Um, and we actually host um, sessions, how you can best prepare for these as well. So make sure you email me or look on our website, hotelschool.nl, and we can show you all of the uh, methods of getting into hotel school. These are just some last QR codes for you to scan, like how you can apply, the international admission requirements, as well as a link to our open day. It's an online open day held by our student ambassadors, and I highly recommend you attend that. Well, that's everything from me. I'll leave you with these icons to give you a recap about hotel school. Um, and I thank you all for joining us today. And please do get in contact with me. I'll pop my email into the chat box. And I wish you all the best of luck with your futures and stay safe. Just within the time, another skill of hospitality education. So I'm going to invite now Luis from Barcelona to talk to us about Temple Hospitality School. Again, we'll watch a short video and then uh, see the presentation to answer your questions at the end. Welcome, Luis. You're on mute, Louise, just to let you know. Great, thank you. So uh, it is a pleasure to be here today with you and joining uh, this stage uh, with so important schools like EHL and Hotel School The Hague, which I have the pleasure to know personally. And uh, for you, those students, and you are thinking about having your career in hospitality, I think it's great to have three different institutions with three different uh, flavors, three different styles, three different locations, uh, which is really great. And then you have the freedom to choose which one suits better your needs. And at the end, you will join your um, your, your success in your career in, in hospitality. 
Uh, in that case, as you see, we are located in, in close to Barcelona, in Sao Paulo. We are Spain's number one hotel, uh, hotel school, hospitality and leisure school, and among the top in, in, in the world in hospitality and, and leisure. So in that case, um, we can see that we are Mediterranean. We are Spain, we are Catalonia, we're Barcelona, we're Sao Paulo. Um, Mid, uh, the Mediterranean is, uh, of course, you know, it's a destination mostly in, uh, in the beach resorts and in, in culture and, and in European cities like Barcelona. Uh, Spain is the second most visited country in, in the world. Uh, for many years, Catalonia is the most common, uh, the most visited tourist destination. And Barcelona is one of the gastronomical capital and most visited cities uh, in all over the world. And Sao Paulo, uh, we are a little town by Barcelona, located 35 minutes away, or 40 kilometers, which uh, we are on the beach. Uh, we live our Mediterranean lifestyle, and if we want to go to a city within the train, we are there 40 minutes away. Here you can see some pictures from, from Barcelona, and here we can have some examples of uh, some of our alumni, because besides being a hospital, of course, where hospitality is cool, we have three major concentrations. Uh, it's hotel management and hospitality. Then we have food and marriage management and culinary arts. And we have the pleasure to say that seven of our alumni, they are the owners of their own Michelin star uh, restaurants. Uh, today we talk mostly about hospitality management. Uh, we have a bachelor degree in hospitality and tourism, which it has three concentrations. And then we have masters in hospitality management that I understand now is on the right stage to talk about. So we'll be focused more about bachelor in hotel management. Talking about our school, um, we are a small school. Uh, there's a schools that are bigger, they're better. In that case, we'll talk that in that case, uh, smaller is better. Uh, we are a customized school. Uh, teaching our students to become leaders within the hospitality industry. And, but we must say we are small because we want to be small. We have 250 students in total, uh, representing 37 nationalities. This means that if we talk about the bachelor degree, the average class size is 15 students, while the normal uh, class per generation per promotion is about for between 25 and 30 students. We know all the students uh, by their names, they, we, they know, we know where they come from, what their goals are, and we try to help them to reach the professional goals. Um, studying with us, uh, since it's a small institution, many of the issues are um, customized or tailor-made. Uh, we have prepared um, personal branding projects with the students. Uh, when we interview them, we tell them which is your dream, and then, uh, of course, we have all the custom, all the general uh, courses. Then we have the concentration courses, and then we have the uh, way to customize their um, concentration within hospitality within this industry. Um, and we have our own training hotel. Uh, uh, actually, when you say uh, we, we have a hotel uh, within our facilities, it's a real hotel open to the public 367 days a year, 65 days a year, 24 7. And this hotel is operated by students and by professors, and of course, by our staff. In that hotel, the students they learn the operations in the rooms division department in uh, the restaurant and in, in, the, in the kitchen department. Um, yes, we can say that we're more a traditional hotel school, but we mix tradition uh, with innovation. And we have these three concentrations. It's uh, international hotel management, food and beverage and events management, and culinary arts and kitchen management. The length of the school is four years, 240 ECTS. It's, uh, we're affiliated to the University of Girona, which gives the official accreditation through the Spanish government and the European Union. Our classes are taught mainly in Spanish. Uh, about 80% are taught in Spanish, about 20% in English. And uh, we believe of learning by doing, like uh, our, my colleagues of EHL and Hotel School de Gay. But in our case, we can say that practical classes are more important in average, 
Uh, in our case, we can say that the practical classes either, either are about 30 percent, while 70 are in um, are in theoretical classes. Uh, all or mo sorry, most of our professors they have experience in the hospitality industry. They've had it previously, or they are actually working in the hospitality industry. So this gives a lot of um, expertise and a lot of experiences and real life experiences that they are shared to our students. And if we talk about the our origins, uh, our origins think that we are in, in Spain. It's a tourist uh, power. And, and even though we started being local here, we kept growing with it keeping always the same location, but we have students from 37 uh, nationalities nowadays and students that they take their internships and they also, they uh, would have alumni working in all over the world, in the five continents, uh, even though we are still are a small institution that that's our point of seeing how education should be done in hotel management. The concentrations, how are they based? The concentrations, they're based in the departments where the students, they do practice during the school year, then the departments and type of companies where the students, they do their internship each of the four summers, and also the concentration and the final thesis that they choose during the fourth year. We start, uh, like university, we start the uh, most core, uh, core courses in the beginning, and then we keep going more concentrated until we finish our bachelor degree after completing the fourth year. In our program, you can have up to four international experiences. When I say experiences, I'm not talking about a trip, I mean about living in another country. This means the internship after the second year, which is three months, uh, the internship after the third year, which is up to five months, and the internship of, uh, sorry, and when you finish, you can, of course, work um, almost any, anywhere in the world. Plus, also, you can uh, do an exchange with other universities with the Erasmus uh, agreement, and we have agreements with some universities, uh, both in America and also in, in Europe. Well, this is about the massive hospitality management. I don't know if there is someone uh, in the, as an audience interested in the, in the, in the masters. The idea, this is uh, the masters has uh, two concentrations. One is hotel management and the other one F&B, food and beverage and restaurant management. This is mostly for people that they didn't have the chance to go to a hotel school at that point when they made a decision. Uh, sometimes I make fun about it and I say they made a mistake and they went to a wrong uh, school. So, uh, but now getting serious. This is someone that they went to mostly to a tourism or um, business school, and then they decided that they have passion for hospitality and they have a chance to change careers with hospitality. And also the other alternative is about a students that they went to a hotel school and somewhere else out of Europe where hospitality has a different flavor it's different, so they want to have an, um, an, um, an international, European, Mediterranean, Spanish experience to learn how hospitality works. Uh, here, as my, my colleagues, uh, we have, even though we're in Spain, we have relations with many, uh, most of the biggest hotel, hotel chains and restaurant chains all over the world. I'm talking mostly here about restaurants, sorry, about hotels, about restaurants, uh, but also about CDRE, other companies that they keep contacting us as, you know, EHL and Hotel School, I think Hague said, you know, people that they, uh, companies that they're searching with this hospitality soft skill profile, professional profile, that mostly you can only find in a hotel school. And they come to us and we have some of our students that they decided to, uh, they keep showing what they learn in hospitality, but in another uh, another type of industry that they need those hospitality uh, knowledge and hospitality skills. Since we are a small institution, um, we had this uh, past week, of course, we had to do it online. Uh, we invited 12 hotel chains, but well, 12 hotel chains for 98 students is not that bad. 
It included also some, some alumni, and we had 347 uh, uh, interviews. This is an average of almost about four interviews per student that they were previously filtered by the companies uh, and accepted by the students. And then when we have all the results, we will meet one by one to, with each student and we will tell them what the proposals they have. And then once we have it, uh, we, in, in case they need assistance, uh, so coaching about it, uh, we will help them. Think that we know all those companies, but also we know the students. What we, we know how they are, the way they like to work, and we know the same about the, about the, 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 the companies. And then what we do is like a matching in order to um, have more chances to, for the student and the company to make the right decision about choosing your first company to start your professional career. The average uh, number of interviews per student of the Bachelor in Hospitality Management, it has been seven, which is not too bad in that case. Uh, these are examples of some students that they are, where they are working and where they, want for, they went for internships, mostly in all over the world. And we also have our residents, okay? Uh, the students they can take a single room or double room, which these are the rooms, as you can see in the picture. This is a real room with a balcony in front of the sea. Uh, we are in a privileged location, first line in the sea, in the ocean, in the Mediterranean. And this is where the students, they can, uh, they can stay. They have three, uh, three, days, um, three meals a day. And mostly they stay here for the first year. And then after the first year, they decide to uh, rent an apartment and share it, which this is uh, one of the universal experience to share living with other, with your classmates and your, your friends. Here, for more information, you can take note and to follow us, uh, to have the email on um, of admissions, and then you can follow us in different uh, social media. And you said us here assisting us today from the international department uh, of admissions. She's here assisting us today in the, in the chat. And I didn't want to spend more time or to invest more time with you because uh, my colleagues did such a great presentation. And since we are promoting this beautiful uh, industry, I didn't want to repeat things that, of course, they've been said but in a perfect way. And uh, I, I, I don't want to make you waste your time with that. And now we are here to assist you uh, for some questions that you might have. Uh, we're here to serve you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Luis. That's right. We are at the Q&A now. So I'm inviting again Sam and uh, Luis to answer some of the questions that have not been answered. And there are very few. So let me let me see where where we last. So there was a question from uh, Niza. How do you combine online and on-site lectures at your universities during the pandemic situation? I think you all briefly went over it, but if we start again, Luis, Sam, and then Luis. Um, so we have managed to do sort of what we call our high flex system. So students are coming on for a week on campus, and then they would stay home for a week. Um, like this, there's always some people in the classroom, so there's a bit of dy dynamic uh, environment as well. Um, but we're also, I mean, in any case, our strategy more long term, and then COVID happened, was to have an online campus. So this uh, this facility was already in um, in the plan. Um, so we just accelerated it, and we now have a pretty good online offering as well. Um, but we're hoping that as of uh, in a few months' time, that students will be able to come back a little bit more full time than in the past. Um, we are doing something similar. So actually in the Netherlands, you may have seen that they were very relaxed about COVID for a long time. We, we had everything open, well not everything open, but we had this intelligent lockdown that ended up being not so intelligent. Um, so we had on-campus education up until December. Um, so we had lots of our students back on campus. Um, and, and having face-to-face -face normal education with obviously uh, 1.5 meters in between and a lot of other restrictions like face masks needed on campus. 
Um, but since December, we have been closed officially on campus because the government mandated us to do so. Uh, but since February, we had our most recent intake. They've actually all joined us on campus. Um, so they're living there, they're living on campus, they're having that student experience, but they are attending all online education for this block. We're hoping by the 15th of March, we're gonna have an update and we have very strong indications from the government that we will um, be reopening. And the same goes for our um, internships actually, because obviously there was a huge impact from COVID on by the, for the internships. Um, we're really happy to report now that as of this month, uh, as of March, 81% of our students were able to go to a physical internship um, abroad uh, and going to a physical on-site internship with the remaining 19% doing an industry project for us, which is um, a really successful initiative started in 2020 during the pandemic, where we've had over 500 companies contact us asking for our students uh, to do a project for them, basically a consultancy role. Um, and they do a six month project, uh, a long term more project where they are working uh, with these companies online. So all around the world, you could be working for a company in Singapore here in Amsterdam um, as the role as a consultant and your plan, your idea, your report will be implemented into that real life company. So it's a it's a unique way. Of course, we would much rather all of our students going on uh, onto uh, site and having physical internships. But it's just an, an example of you know how we've had to be a bit dynamic in these times. Um, but the good news is, as I said, 81% plus are going on physical internships again. So the signs are that it's changing. In that case, we can say that we are privileged uh, since we are a small campus, a uh, small university in front of the sea. Um, of course, we had to go. Uh, we started the school year uh, during three, uh, three weeks here. Then the authorities said to start doing some online courses. Uh, we did that, but we never shut down. Uh, we could do the practice internship at, at the training hotel, and uh, we got a special authorization in order to come back earlier to classes. We started uh, offering the students part of the lectures on campus, okay, by groups. Of course, we use all the motor, all the protocols, the masks, gel, the distance, and the windows open. Uh, we are okay. Yes. It's winter time, uh, but this is a Mediterranean. This is not a too cold winter. You need a jacket, but you can be in class. This was great because the students, they didn't miss that college, that university life, as uh, most of the universities in the world had to, had to lose because there was no other option. And since four weeks ago, we have all the students in campus. Having all the students in campus, we're back to normality. The vaccination now is going on. Uh, most of our staff is back vaccinated right now. Uh, but we hope that, and let's cross fingers, that everything will be all right. And in terms of finding the internships of our students, uh, we already are working on it. Uh, it's not the same to look at an internship for 1,000 students than for um, 200 students. So our connections uh, are working uh, to this year. It's a little, little bit more difficult than a normal year, but we are in the, in the right track. And I would add something about uh, those people that you are uh, thinking about uh, starting a career in hospitality. Yes, the situation right now is not that good, but we're coming back. I mean, the, the, the vaccine is here and the bad, the bad days are gone. And now all the hotels are opening, reopening, and people, they are willing to serve hospitality to our guests. And this is gonna be a great season. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Let's hope so. And uh, there was a question earlier. I know that Luis Peter answered it. Um, it was about a gap year, whether or not you would uh, recommend a gap year. It came from Liv Leonora. Um, Luis, um, let me read your answer. Gap years are great. If you prepare planning more experience in volunteering projects or charity, perhaps you want to take time out to develop a skill. All these are great pursuits for gap year. Is there anything you would like to add to develop that answer if your colleagues want to contribute to the gap year topic? I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, gap years are, um, they can be very beneficial if you make it so. So I completely agree with what Louise has said there. Um, you know, you really need to, to make it worthwhile. 
Uh, and often, uh, for example, you know, we have two intakes, uh, as is quite common with hospitality business schools. Um, and, and that gives you that opportunity, for example, if you were to come to hotel school in the selection process and, and perhaps you weren't meeting our expectation, expectations just yet, or we recommend that you get some work experience or some kind of leadership experience, that's where a gap year can come really in handy. Um, and, and you can develop those skills and develop yourself uh, in a way that will better prepare yourself for the application process for these schools and universities. But don't just you know go and sit on a beach for a year um, as much as that i would love to do that right now i want a gap year i like to add because you said everything and and i totally agree with you that a gap year it also depends on on the culture on on the origins on on on, on the country you're reading uh in my case uh since it's not this is not that traditional in spain uh we're not so lucky to do that um, but I, I think that uh, a gap year, of course, you, you must take advantage of it. You have to learn some skills, you have to mature. Uh, but in case that you are sure about what your future should be in terms of a professional career, um, investing one gap year means that you'll start working one year later. So it, it all depends. I mean, both choices are great. It all depends on the circumstances and on on the background, but I insist both options are, are great. All right, well, I think we managed to answer all questions and I just shared your contact details in the chat in case someone wants to get in touch privately with you, uh, tell tell you their story and um, get more of your curriculum structure. We have shared everyone's brochure on the handouts tab. Um, so I think, uh, I think we're ready to, to say goodbye to our audience and to your wonderful presenters. Thank you so much for being with us today. Always lovely to see you. You know how much I miss you on the road, but um, hopefully that will be very soon. Yes. Sam, what would be the first place you will visit for pleasure after, you know, things are back to normal? First place for pleasure. Oof, that's a good question. I haven't thought of it, but I'm, I'm recently in a bit of a Caribbean vibe. I would like to go to the Caribbean. I just need two weeks on a beach, to be honest. I don't need adventure or anything like that. Just relaxing. I want, to go, I want to go back to London. I just, I want to see my family and I want to see a bloody red bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my case, any destination is great. Uh, my first wish is to please get out, to finish with all the COVID situation. And as long as, as you are with the people you want to be with, uh, any place can be great. Caribbean can be great, the Greece, islands, um, any good place with good company would be great. Your answer was much nicer, Louise. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel guilty now that I was this healthy. <laughs> no, but you know why? Because I have two kids. So uh, okay. that's a big difference. So I have two kids you know, too, I would say and you have I would say to go on holiday without them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm going to ski in case huh? someone wants to know. Once this is over, I would love to go skiing. I haven't seen snow for quite a while, so please, please. <laughs> yeah, anytime you like. Yeah. Anyway, thank you we so much. For me. Thank you, thank you so much for your time and knowledge. And I hope to see you very soon. Thank you for the webinar. Have a great day. Thank you. you too. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care. Take care. Be good. <laughs>